a lot of good information from our two patients who have joined us on here. So Tony, if you could turn your camera on as well, that would be lovely to be able to ask you to share while we're waiting. It should be coming up here in a second. There you go. You got me. Good. It's good to see you. So actually, Tony, um, okay. I'm going to start yeah, with sorry. you because you had signed up first with us. And if you would give us a little history, a little bit about how were you diagnosed? Did you have any different kinds of symptoms that, pe that patients should know about? And, you know, what did you do in terms of going through your diagnoses and the types of treatments that you had? Share a little bit about your experience, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. sure. Um, so I'm 56 years old. And in March of 2021, I happened to notice that uh, while going to the bathroom urinating, I had some uh, irritation that kind of got worse to where it was very painful. So I do have a great primary care physician. Um, so I went there and initially they did a, you know, a urine test, a culture test to see and put me on antibiotics and thought I had a urinary tract infection, the normal first line of uh, defense and probably the most probable. Anyways, unfortunately that wasn't the case. Uh, they called me three days later and said, hey, uh, I have to refer you to a urologist and I'm not in, the, I wasn't in the Hopkins network. I'm uh, maybe about an hour and a half outside. So I went to a local urologist. Um, they did some testing and I guess it was probably April to May. We did a cysto where they put me under, they went in uh, and looked at the tumor. And then at the time they planned on doing whatever they needed to do. So at that point uh, there was uh, carcinoma in situ. So there was a tumor bed inside the bladder on the right lateral wall. And uh, he resected that tumor. And at the same time, he took samples enough to tell whether or not it was muscle invasive. So we uh, got done that, we healed up. And the plan was that then uh, June 21st, I think was the date, we go back in, he'd look at the tumor, and then we would th start a course of immunotherapy BCG treatments um, for six consecutive weeks. Uh, in the meantime, the, the bladder cancer came back and it wasn't muscle invasive, which was great news. It was high grade urothelial carcinoma, which was the bad news part of it. Um, so on June 21st, when we went back in the local hospital with the local urologist, um, he noticed how fast the cancer, the tumor grew back. And I'll, one detail I did forget, uh, there was a post-surgery where they retracted the tumor out. Uh, they did a chemo treatment um, right after the surgery as well. Um, when he went back in, the tumor had grown back, unfortunately, pretty um, quickly. And he also noticed um, in the terminology on the right distal ureter where it entered the bladder, um, it looked as if it had uh, some discoloration that caused concern of the tumor spreading. So he obviously stopped the surgery. And uh, once we had the follow-up, uh, he referred me over to the Hopkins team. He said he really, at this point, uh, that was where I needed to be at the Bladder Cancer Institute there at Hopkins. So I did, obviously, um, with uh, nobody there having set eyes on the, the tumor that I had inside of me, uh, I came in, Dr. Singla did the initial intake cysto. And he also went and made sure it was still he was uh, comfortable with it, not or diagnosed as non-muscle invasive. Uh, once we did that and he looked at the ureter, um, we then took a step back and that's when Dr. Hoffman Sensitz uh, was brought into the conversation. And we talked about different uh, options as far as chemotherapy and some of the benefits and pros and cons that they touched on during the presentation. Um, we opted to do the pre-surgery pre uh, chemotherapy. So I had a port put in, went through the whole process. And I can tell you that a lot of the, the chemotherapy, I did miss one week, um, but there was some really good job that Dr. Hoffman did to minimize the uh, obvious uh, effects of the chemotherapy with either, uh, you know, trying to hydrate and do some other things, change up uh, the medications that I was on to try and minimize the effects of the chemotherapy. Um, so that brings us to uh, the surgery. So uh, it would have been somewhere July. We went in. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. We already did, I already did surgery. Let me get my timeline straight. 
So we did the chemotherapy that ended somewhere around October 15th or somewhere in and around there. So they wanted to wait a period of time for uh, the, obviously the inflammation, the circulatory system and all those things to heal from the, the uh, chemotherapy effects. So on December 29th, um, we went, Dr. Singler went in and he took a section of my bladder and he also took a section of my ureter where it met that bladder uh, enough, farther enough up the ureter where it actually cleared the margins. And he couldn't take all of the tumor bed out of the bladder because it would have been too much. Uh, and then he reattached it. And that's what would have been referred to earlier as a, um, a bladder, um, uh, kidney sparing uh, surgery. So uh, that was December 29th. Uh, with that, I went home with a, a stint in my ureter to make sure everything, you know, stayed copacetic as far as the uh, ureter being reattached to the bladder. Um, at that point, uh, about a month ago, I went and had that stint taken out. And looking forward right now, um, it's going to be mid-March. We're going to go back in and look and see how things are. Uh, one of the things when Dr. Singler took the stint out, he did another uh, urinalysis and cultured it. And it still showed, uh, unfortunately, uh, and I don't know that it wouldn't have shown that, but uh, still showed high-grade urothelial carcinoma. So all we were, the journey and the things that we've gone through, uh, we kind of neutralized it, hopefully in the ureter, and we'll find out on March 15th. And we're going to go back to where we thought we were in June uh, once he looks at that tumor uh, in the bladder and start the BCG treatments. Ultimately, if we don't see what we like, that's going to be a different plan. And that's what I would say um, is the biggest lesson I could say with people because uh, I know I heard it referred to as safe space on the internet for information. Uh, you can go down many rabbit holes trying to find information. And ultimately, sometimes the answers to the questions are not something that are black and white. Um, and everything emerges or evolves over time. I know it's difficult to have patience as you're going through this process. Um, uh, but uh, that's the only thing I could do is encourage people to to take a breath, take a step. I mean, I'm, I'm an optimistic person, but it, you can easily get down, um, you know, uh, and do your best. I mean, lean on the people around you, lean on your surgeon and your oncologist. Both of them have been great. If I've got a question, I shoot them when I am on the, on the uh, portal and they get back to me right away. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm optimistic that on the 15th, we're going to be kicking forward with the, uh, BCG treatment, and then we'll just start a surveillance, quarterly surveillance interval, and life will go back to normal. Well, we'll be sending positive thoughts your way on March the 15th. It'll be here before you know it. So thank you for sharing, Tony. And we'll get back to you with some questions a little bit later on. And now I'd like to talk okay. to Christina. You know, Christina, what about your experience? I need you to turn off your, uh, turn on your microphone because you're on mute right now. There you go. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for um, inviting me to share my experience uh, through this journey. <clears throat> you can hear my voice is a little raspy. Um, this has been happening throughout treatment on and off. So um, it's a little bit inflamed. Um, my story started um, quite a while ago, actually. Um, I presented with blood in the urine in October of 2018. Um, testing uh, showed nothing, uh, that there was nothing there. And in fact, my urologist, a local urologist said it was because I had beets for dinner and he really thought it was from the beets and that it was not blood in the urine. Um, fast forward six months, uh, severe left flank pain took me to the emergency department at our local hospital where they uh, <clears throat> did a CT and um, found a stricture around my ureter. Um, I was seen by the local urologists after that who placed stents into my ureter uh, and said they were absolutely positive. This was not a malignancy. This was probably something completely benign. Um, after three stents, the last one of which was a balloon stent, uh, nothing opened up in the ureter. So then they sent me for, it's a, I, I apologize, but I forget the name of the test. I went in and they did radio something in my kidneys, both kidneys, 
and one kidney, the left kidney, showed that it was functioning at 25%, and um, the other one was fine. So then I was referred to Hopkins. I saw a urologist who is no longer with Hopkins. Um, he too did not think that I presented with any type of cancer, and he was going to place a stent as well. Um, the stent would not go in, so then he scheduled surgery for me. Now we're September of 2019. Um, he said if he couldn't fix the ureter, there was a very, very slight possibility that he would have to take my kidney and my ureter. And that's exactly what happened. Um, after the surgery, he told me um, that he wasn't worried. We'd wait for the PATH report, but he wasn't concerned about what he saw. Um, a week later, I, I got a call that it was high grade urothelial, upper tract urothelial carcinoma. And um, <clears throat> I needed to meet with Dr. Hoffman as soon as possible. So I did, and that was an um, incredible experience. She is the absolute best physician in the entire universe. Um, and I owe everything to her. I really mean that. Uh, we met. Um, I have been healthy my entire life. I uh, never smoked, drink, drank minimally, uh, exercised, vegetarian, ate well, and had no clue why I possibly could have gotten this cancer. Never heard of such a cancer. It was so rare and so aggressive. And she was, you know, she was very pragmatic and talked to me about what the options were. And we decided that um, it was after surgery. So we were going to go on cisplatin and gemcitabine, which I did for four months. Um, and that was followed by another surgery, um, retroperitoneal lymph lymphonectomy. I think that's how you pronounce it, um, where 52 lymph nodes were removed and 10 of those were malignant. Um, in August of 2020, I started on um, immunotherapy and that did not work well for me. I had a bad reaction and the tumor was growing. Um, so Dr. Hoffman took me off that and I started on m um, which was pretty successful, tumor shrunk, um, but what happened was my liver enzymes elevated. So the dosage had to be decreased significantly. And um, as a result, the tumor grew back. In the summer of 2021, I had um, stereotactic ablative radiotherapy and that stabilized the tumor, the size of the tumor. Um, and then I was off treatment until I got my scan in September, which showed that things were growing back. So then I was on many of the drugs that were on Dr. Hoffman's screen. Um, I got on sasituzumab, um, was on that for a couple of months. That didn't work. And right now I am fortunate enough to be participating in the clinical trial, which I started in January. And um, we'll see what happens. I meet with Dr. Hoffman tomorrow. So that's my story. Thank you so much for sharing it.